Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be when reality hits the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So reality, that's where you live, that's where I live. That is not where the narcissist lives so frequently. The narcissist is a master manipulator, and what they want to do is they want to fool people and trick them and trap them and capture them, keep them in the narcissistic fog, being devalued day after day, week after week, month after month, maybe even year after year. The narcissist knows what they're doing. They know exactly what buttons to press. They know exactly when to pull back and when to lay on the gas pedal of abuse. Remember, the narcissistic abusive cycle, it goes around in a loop. It is the love bomb slash euphoric stage. It is the devaluation stage where you are existing in the majority of that relationship. That's usually the longest part. Then there's the ending of the relationship. And then there's a hoover. Potentially, the narcissist may hoover you. If you are hoovered, do not accept the hoover. Become hooverable proof. Do not accept a hoover. Remember, a hoover is when the narcissist is trying to draw you back into the relationship for a day, a week, a month, a year, the rest of your life, or they're trying to test the temperature of you to see if you've healed, to see if you've seen behind the mask, and to see if you are strong enough to decline the hoover. That is why so frequently in the videos I create, I suggest for people to go no contact, to block the narcissist, delete them, remove them and all flying monkeys and people associated with them. If not now, when? Now, if you can't do that, utilize gray rock, become dull and boring, but get off the radar of the narcissist. But when reality hits for the narcissist, this will be when the relationship is over, it's finished. Maybe it ended yesterday for you, maybe it ended four years ago, maybe it's been 30 years, who knows. But what have you been doing since the relationship ended? I'll tell you what you've been doing. You've been doing exactly what I have been doing, which is you've been learning, growing, healing, processing so many things, understanding that there are so many people that don't have your best interest at heart, and the narcissist is certainly at the top of that list, but you were working on yourself. That is why you took your time out. You stayed in the cocoon of boundaries. You insulated yourself. You protected yourself. There were many times that you had sleepless nights. You may have gained weight, lost weight. You had to journal, meditate, see a therapist, watch videos, read. You had to really do so many things, maybe even heal childhood wounds, but you were changed forever from that narcissistic relationship. And it was for the betterment, I can assure you. You may not see it right now, but in the future you will. The narcissist wasn't changed for the betterment at all. The narcissist wasn't changed. What the narcissist did post-relationship, no matter how it ended, they simply changed the mask that they wore. They simply superglued a new mask for a new unsuspecting source of supply or a new person who doesn't know what narcissism is or perhaps maybe they fell into a relationship with another toxic person similar to themselves or maybe they went back to a recycled source of supply who did not find the needle in a haystack. They did not get the light bulb moment on narcissism. Now either way, understand what I'm sharing with you. If your relationship ended recently or it ended years ago, you're still here in the community, you're still on the channel you're still coming back to get your cup full with wisdom and knowledge and to share your experiences and insight with the community. That is what we do. We really slow our lives down and we process and we understand that this didn't just happen to us. It happened to hundreds of millions of us. The thing is we, the people here on the channel and in the community, we figured it out. We were fortunate enough to deduce and get that first light bulb moment that yes, in fact, we were in a relationship with a narcissist or a toxic person, whatever you wanna call them. But again, as I mentioned, when the relationship ended, the narcissist just slithered away. They went on to a new supply or maybe even multiple sources of supply. They changed the mask. They changed the narrative. They changed the history that you had with them. They gaslit the new supply, meaning they were telling the new supply lies and fibs and untruths and all these things. And they were stringing the new supply along. That's exactly what they did with you. That's why the cycle just continues to go around and around and around. Remember, the one constant in the narcissistic abusive cycle, it's not you, it's the narcissist. And they know it, and I know it, and you know it. But when reality hits the narcissist, it will be when they look back, and believe me when I tell you, they will do it. They do it probably more than you would think. They look back and they say to themselves, wow, I blew up the relationships with my children. I blew up the relationships with my spouses. I blew up the relationships with my own parents. I blew up the relationships with my siblings with my colleagues, my coworkers, with my neighbors, with the people in the communities I was a part of. 
I cannot do anything other than try to wreck people's lives and destroy people's relationships. And the whole time I'm doing that, I want to take as much from them I can, as I can, which includes the time, money, energy, effort, love, empathy, status, health, everything the narcissist can take from you, they will do it if given the opportunity. But this is what the narcissist does. They will be faced with the dose of reality. Maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's right now. Maybe it's in a week. Maybe it's already happened. Maybe it's happening consecutive days for them, but they will have to look back and reflect, even if it's just for a few moments, even if it's before they close their eyes before they go to sleep at night, after they've drained their three smartphones from their cell batteries because they were grooming other sources of supply till wee hours of the morning. But they will have to look back and say, yes, not only did I have the best thing I ever had in you, but on top of that, I blew it up. And the person that is watching the video, as I'm creating it, you, were the best thing they had ever found had ever come across. You were the one beautiful, bright, shining light that was in their life, and they know it. And the thing is, is the narcissist, they press on that gas pedal of abuse so much, day in and day out, week after week, that it really becomes so cumbersome and so tiring and so draining. And they are testing the relationship when you were in it. Sometimes they test the, the ending of the relationship if they try to hoover you. Remember, don't accept the hoover. But what the narcissist is at their core is they are cowards, they're bullies, they're shallow, they're hollow, there's nothing to them. They are empty vessels. And what they need to do is they need to take other people's hopes, dreams, aspirations, insights, ideas, thoughts, relationships. They wanna take all these things from people and they wanna drive a wedge between these people and anything that matters to them. And again, that was you at one point, remember that. Do not ever forget that the narcissist was exactly who you figured them out to be. It's not the person that you're perhaps ruminating about, thinking about all the great times that you had. Side note, did you have good times with the narcissist? Of course you did. Did you have some great times? Yes, you did. Did they outweigh all the toxicity and all the negative times? Not even close. Think about how many hours you would wait at the dinner table for the narcissist to come home when they would string you along, telling you, yeah, I'll be there at six, and that turned into seven, which turned into eight. Next thing you know, it's 9.30, and the narcissist is nowhere to be found. Remember, you don't know they're a narcissist, but you just wasted your time. What were they doing for that four hour window? Well, they claimed they were at work or claimed that they got stuck in traffic or got a flat tire or that they didn't see the message, et cetera. But these, these uh, death, the paper cuts add up. It's like death by a thousand paper cuts. The, the strange um, behaviors of the narcissist begin to mount. And there comes a breaking point for each and every one of us when we have had enough and we put up a boundary or we call them out and say something like, hey, what's going on? You're, you've missed dinner now four nights in a row. You used to be here every night and now you're not really around. What are, you, what are you doing? And then they would tell you, oh, you're so insecure. What's your problem? I, I don't get you. Go see a therapist. I only have issues with you. No one else questions me like this. They would get you off the scent of them. They would get you off the track or the trace of figuring out who they were. And this was by design because the narcissist, again, was checking the pulse and the temperature of the relationship. But then what happens when that supply source, i.e. you, and remember, you're not a supply source. The supply source is like a wipey, wipey or Clorox or Kleenex or something. You're a beautiful, bright, shining light. And my hope is you really hold that and embrace it and understand that you are just that, just like myself. But when that energy source is gone and the narcissist has to look back at every, every relationship they've destroyed, every lie they've told, every fib they've told, every untruth they've told, every smear campaign sentence that has ever come out of their mouth, and they will do this, they will reflect back. They'll deny it, but for a quick split second, they'll say, my gosh, I really did blow up a lot of people's lives. Then they'll snap themselves back into what we call reality, which is okay, for them, reality is okay, I need to put on a different mask. I need to act like I'm somebody different because this is what I do. I am not genuine or authentic. I will just change the mask and I'll change the narrative and I'll do whatever I want to and I'll run through this life like a bull in a china shop because I will destroy everything I can. And not only that, I will accumulate, accumulate as much as I can, but when the narcissist does these things, there is no accountability on their behalf. There is no introspection. There is no saying, I was wrong, I apologize, I'm sorry, I want to change, I will improve. All you get is the same old loop of manipulation, the same old loop of lies saying, well, if you didn't do this, I wouldn't do that. Or I'm sorry you feel that way. Or I can't control how you feel. Or that's too bad for you. Or I'm free to do whatever I want to do. Or what's your problem? They will say so many things like that. And you, back then, when you didn't have the wisdom, you would be tolerating it and taking it, thinking that they could change, trying to have adult conversations with them. But again, like everything with the narcissist, everything dries up, every relationship fades away. Relationships are broken left, right, and center 
almost daily by the narcissist. Maybe not the exact ending of the relationship is broken every day, but little fractures are being divided between the narcissist and any relationship that they have a part of because they don't know how to treat people. What they do know is how to abuse people. What they do know is how to manipulate people. What they do know is how to use the smear campaign. What they do know is how to triangulate people. What they do know is how to act like they're doing nothing wrong, but yet continue to press on the gas pedal of abuse. But all this will fade away, and there will be a point in time when the narcissist will have to reflect and look back on their life, and they will say to themselves, wow, I really had it all. I had so much, almost all, all during all periods of my life, but specifically the time with you. The, you see, when you were with the narcissist, no matter what it was, brother, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, romantic interest, friend, who knows, but you were doing everything you can and you were giving everything you possibly could to the betterment of the narcissist and trying to keep that relationship afloat or you thought you were in a stable, healthy relationship and now you're figuring out or you already have deduced that there's no such thing as stability in the narcissistic relationship. All you get is chaos, confusion, manipulation, dishonesty, distrust, and deflection. And the narcissist knows this. But all these things I'm sharing with you, they will catch up with the narcissist. Remember, each and every day the narcissist is getting older. Each and every day they're aging just like I am and you are. Each and every day the narcissist is getting closer and closer to where? No, not the pinnacle of indifference, not the mountaintop of indifference. That's where you are or you are headed because you're healing. They get closer to becoming the aging narcissist. And the aging narcissist is not a pretty sight to see. Let me tell you right now. The aging narcissist is somebody who will think back the glory days of their lives and they think that they're 20 or 30, 40 years younger and they wear clothes of a different generation. And these people use words of uh, the present day when in fact they should be using words from a long time ago. You see, they don't want to give up the past. And when the aging narcissist looks in the mirror, what do they see? They see someone who looks 30 years younger. But the truth is, it's actually someone who looks way, way older. But the narcissist their whole life, they're in denial. They can't accept the truth. They can't fathom the truth. What they want to do is just continue to spiral downwards and take as many people with them on that sinking ship, which is their life. This is what they do. And this is why when you have the ability to do so, go no contact, block them, delete them, remove them, and all flying monkeys. Now, I've said that twice, and I say it in every video because not only does it work, but it will allow you to get your energy back and it will allow you to focus and you will get clarity and your health will return, your money will return, your friendships will be rebuilt if you, so, if you choose to do, do so. You can create new friendships, you can fall in love again, etc. You can take a class, teach a class, read a book, write a book, you can do whatever you want to do, but you need to do it without the narcissist because the narcissist did not have your best interest at heart. And when the narcissist has to look back and they have to really get punched in the face with reality, it won't be a good thing to to be anywhere near them because this is not only when they will probably experience a narcissistic collapse or a narcissistic injury, which I don't really use those terms on the channel. I'm trying to highlight and illustrate that you don't want to be anywhere near the narcissist when A, their cell phone battery runs dry or dead, or B, when they get a dose of reality because it's not gonna be a good place to be. You don't wanna be anywhere in the proximity of them. So this is what I talk about on the channel and specifically during one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. You don't wish, the, you don't wish any ill will on the narcissist. You don't want anything bad for them. You don't wish anything bad for them. You need to get to that pinnacle of indifference where you just don't care about them, whether they win the lottery or you know, maybe something not so good happens. But everybody's life goes sideways at one point. Everybody's. Mine did. Yours, I'm certain, has. The narcissist is no different. So don't think that they've gone out, uh, gone gallivanting the globe and everything's all puppies and rainbows and unicorns and butterflies and they're living their best life with the new supply. That's the last thing they're doing. They're stuck and trapped in their tiny little feeble brain. Remember that. Their tiny little pea brain that runs around in a Hollywood script and it keeps on telling them the same old thing. I am the best. I am in competition with people. I am better than them. I am. I will manipulate them. No one will ever figure out who I am. I need to change the mask. I need to insert the new supply. I need to remove this person from my life. They're getting too close. I need to withdraw from this person. I need to string this person along. I need to keep juggling people on social media and texting multiple people at the same time by sending the same template text, but it'll seem like I'm genuine and heartfelt. I need to continue to be on the go. This is why the narcissist can't sit still. This is why the narcissist needs an unpaid helper. This is why the narcissist needs the walking apology. This is why the narcissist needs people to regulate them. This is why the narcissist is a petulant child in an adult body and they will never ever in a thousand years be accountable. This is why the narcissist can't change. This is why the narcissist can't grow. So going back to the ending of the relationship, when your relationship ended, as I suggested and mentioned, you healed and you processed things. 
you journaled, you did everything you needed to do, you slowed your life down. That's not what the narcissist did. What they did is they continued to look for other unsuspecting people or recycled people. And they wanted to get in relationships with them to take as much from them as they can. Because the narcissist needs to always be busy. They need to always be on the go. They're always looking for the next new shiny object. They're looking for the next opportunity. They're looking for the next person to play. They're looking for the next person to, to glom onto and to steal their energy. And remember, this is very important, you get this, and I've never mentioned it in a video before, but not everybody is a beautiful, bright, shining light. Example, you may say, well, what are you talking about, Andrew? You, keep, you tell us that we are. Well, you are. But then again, you're not a narcissist. See what I'm saying? The narcissist isn't a beautiful, bright, shining light. What they wanna do is steal your beautiful, bright, shining light. They wanna steal your energy, and they wanna take it for themselves, and this is exactly what they did. And reality will, will give them a real big punch in the face when they realize that any source of supply or any relationship they enter in the future, it won't even come close to comparing to you because you were the one that got away. You were the one that healed. You are the one that is the beautiful, bright, shining light. You are the most valuable person. You are the person that comes first, second, and third. And now you understand and you've applied the tools and you've acquired the wisdom with your experience and you understood that you, you can't be in a narcissistic relationship. You need to cut these people out of your lives, no matter who they are mom, dad, aunt, uncle, sibling, coworker, colleague, drown them out, choke them out, do not give them information, certainly do not overshare, do not tell them your whereabouts, what you're doing, who you're dating, if you watch movies, what movie you're watching, etc. They should know nothing about you. And the narcissist, the one that you are in the relationship with, or the plural narcissists, they shouldn't have the luxury of looking at you, of communicating with you, of knowing about you, of corresponding with you. These people had everything in you, everything. And once they did what they did and you removed yourself or you were removed, either way my heart goes out to you, you're changed forever because you've healed. The narcissist hasn't healed. They're still stuck in that low vibrational quagmire state. That's where they will exist for the rest of their life. And they know it and I know it and you know it. That's not you, you're out of there, you're out of the mud. You're now elevated, you are the beautiful bright shining light rising higher and higher through the ashes like a phoenix. And your power, your energy is higher than the sun, the moon and the stars. The narcissist knew this. And again, they try to capture you and your energy for a period of time, and they succeeded for the length of that relationship until something broke, until something gave. And when that actually broke or gave and you healed, or you're well on the healing path, including going no contact, etc., then you, you get recharged and you now have a superpower. And this is a superpower on steroids once you really wrap your head around what you were in and how you've changed for the better. You see, the narcissist can't change, they can't heal. They think that they are the best person on the planet. They think they're the most attractive. They think that they have no concerns or no issues that need attendance. That's why they keep on putting band-aids on their instability and their anxiety and their manipulation. They keep on just running from themselves. So tonight, as an example, when you put your head on the pillow, you go to sleep. My hope is you can rest, uh, sorry, rest peacefully and you can put your head down and you can say, wow, I had a great day today. I made uh, improvements. I've accomplished some things. I have goals. Maybe you're creating and or developing an exit plan. Maybe you're finally out of the narcissistic relationship. Maybe tomorrow's the day you'll get out of it. Who knows? But what I'm sharing is you're doing things for yourself. What is a narcissist doing? Not one thing for themselves. They're trying to plot and plan on how to take people's money, how to take people's hearts, how to take people's energy. Key word there in those three sentences was take. That's what the narcissist does. They take, take, and take. And when they're done, what do they want to do? That's right, they want to take more. But when you remove yourself from the relationship, or you have been removed, and you finally get the message and you go no contact, they can't take anything else from you because they're no longer in your vicinity or proximity, and you're no longer in a relationship with them, and that's a great thing. So understand, the narcissist will have to have a huge dose of reality eventually. Maybe it's today, tonight, tomorrow. Maybe it's next week, I don't know. But it will, it will give them a real wake-up call because the narcissist had the best thing in you, and you did everything you could for them and for the relationship, and once you're removed, and specifically once you've healed, you're a totally different person, not them. They stay stuck, and they have to look for somebody like you, which they will never, ever find. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. And I will talk to you tomorrow. And understand... I don't wish ill will upon anybody. My hope is you don't either. I never have, I never will. I'm just sharing with you that in the long run, the empath wins. In the long run, the empath becomes the educated empath. In the long run, 
the empath puts up boundaries and realizes that not everybody has our best interest at heart. And also in the long run, the narcissist will get what's coming to them. It won't happen anytime soon, probably. It won't happen with your uh, being anywhere near them because you've got no contact, et cetera, and probably relocated. But the narcissist's life will go sideways. And even, even when you were in the relationship, the narcissist's life was going sideways. You just didn't know about it. So this is what will happen. It will be the demise of the narcissist once they get the wake up call and then once reality really slaps them in the face. And that's figuratively, not literally. But when that happens, they will say to themselves, wow, I really did a number on myself. Yeah, you did, because that's what you do. Everyone, I love you all, God bless you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. All right, enjoy yourselves, bye.